So you're thinking about moving to Dayton, Ohio, and you've heard great things about Springboro. And for good cause, Springboro is a fantastic place to live. I live in Springboro, but there are definitely some drawbacks to living in Springboro. And in this video, I'm gonna show you both the pros and the cons of living in Springboro, Ohio. You definitely wanna hang out to the end, because I'm gonna show you a really inexpensive way to live in Springboro, and you'll definitely wanna see that. We're gonna dive into it right now. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is about living in Springboro, Ohio, make sure to hit that subscribe button, tap the little bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the market here in Springboro. My name is Mike Wall. We are the number one real estate resource here in Dayton, Ohio on YouTube. We get calls, emails, texts from people just like you every single day looking to make the move to Springboro. We absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to make a move in the next nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email or even schedule a Zoom call in the description below. Be happy to help you make the smooth move to Springboro. You're still here. All right, well, good for you. I'm gonna give you a great video, a pros and cons video of Springboro, Ohio. Now we're gonna dig right in. First thing I'm gonna start with is the most obvious thing. It's the weather here in Ohio. I am a Texas transplant and I really, really miss the weather down in Texas, although it was extremely hot in the summers. It is also extremely hot here, but it is also extremely cold in the wintertime. And it's very, what's the word for it? It is bipolar in Ohio. It doesn't know what it wants to do sometimes. Today, it's January, excuse me, it's February 7th, 2023. And it was 54 and sunny out in February. And earlier this week, it was in the teens. And so the weather is especially bipolar here in Ohio. Uh, and it can cause uh, for people to get sick. Uh, the weather is just in oftentimes, I mean, for weeks on end, it will be dreary and gray. It will create a very depressing type mood. Um, but let me give you some of the statistics and I'm going to share my screen with you. And this will give you some context as to what you're getting into when you move to Springboro, Ohio. And so the first thing we're going to look at in I love uh, going to best places and it, it will really give us a nice little rundown uh, very quickly of how the weather is in Springboro, Ohio. And as you can see here, um, Springboro gets about 40 inches of rain a year um, and the U.S. average is 38. So just above the U.S. average, Springboro averages about 12 inches of snow per year. Although I, I think that's probably uh, a little high. Um, but I can't be sure. We don't seem to get that much snow anymore, but uh, 12 inches, I guess one inch every other week uh, could add up fairly quickly. The U.S. average is 28 inches, so well below uh, the the average for snow here in Springboro uh, compared to the U.S. On average, there are 179 sunny days per year in Springboro, um, and the U.S. average is 205. As I mentioned before, especially in the wintertime, uh, it is really gray and cloudy, and in the springtime, it just rains. It seems to rain uh, for several days. Uh, for me, it feels like an entire month of rain. I guess the good news is you don't have to water your plants, but uh, we do get a lot of rain here in the springtime. And so just to give you some, you know, some some context. It, it rains, uh, as I said, on average, a hundred and um, it, it's 40 inches of rain, but it rains on average 117 days per year. So that's a lot of freaking rain. And that that's actually um, rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Don't get much hail here. I guess that's a good thing unless you're looking to repair an old roof and you want to claim um, a new roof on your insurance, but we don't get a lot of hail here and nor do we get a lot of really bad thunderstorms, uh, which we did down in Texas. Uh, we do get some, um, occasional tornadoes, but, uh, that's the exception and not the rule for sure. So, so some, our summer highs here around 85 degrees, our winter lows around 21. Um, and, uh, Again, it's to me, it's really hot and humid here in the summer times and it's really cold. So you get both extremes 
And in Texas, uh, oftentimes the winters were really mild and so very bearable and, and made the heat in the summertime much more bearable. And here it just seems like you get too extreme. So weather definitely a con here in Ohio. The next thing I'm going to talk about with you is um, the average sale price in Springboro. And, and those of you coming from other states, um, especially on the East and West Coast, you're going to think I'm a little crazy here, but stay with me. The average sale price in Dayton, Ohio, so that's Dayton proper, is $111,951. The average sale price in Springboro is $387,537. So it's like three times the amount that you would get in Dayton here in Springboro. And so there is a high average sale price here. It is above the U.S. average of $348,079. And so um, what I thought I would do is just kind of show you what you get for that $387,537 by showing you an, an example. Um, and I pulled this house up. This is actually in Settlers Walk, which is a neighborhood I used to live in. It's a wonderful neighborhood. It's a it's a relatively new community. And when I say new, it was built all usually um, within the last 25 years. And so Settlers Walk, a great area. It's a great this will be a great indicator of how far your average sale price will go in Springboro, Ohio. So you can see I pulled up this property here at 145 Janney Lane in Settlers Walk. And it's a four bedroom, three and a half bath home. You can see right here, it listed at 375 and it sold for $10,000 over the list price. The house is built in 2000. It's 3,022 square feet, um, $127.40 a square foot. It's on a quarter acre lot or just a little under a quarter acre. And um, some other notables here is that uh, it has a two car attached garage. It also has a full basement. And it does not mention that it's finished. So let's look at some photos and really give you uh, a snapshot of what you can expect for your $387,000 budget. So as you can see, uh, vinyl constructed home, neighborhood, uh, nice front porch, uh, nice landscaping. This is your piece of Americana here. And it looks like it's been updated. And I know this for a fact because in 2000, they were not using dark wood wrought iron staircases, especially for homes like this. So you can see some updated flooring, updated um, spindles and staircase here. Uh, beautiful uh, two-story great room. Lots of windows. Very, very nice home here. Very nice. Updated fireplace mantle updated kitchen so white cabinets no builder grade cabinets anymore nice backsplash stainless steel appliances newer island there very very nice wow little office area here master bath pretty basic it looks like maybe they refinished the cabinets, uh, a darker stain, but my guess is that mirror and vanity are original. Children's bedrooms. Yeah, uh, this bathroom has definitely not been updated. Uh, perhaps the flooring has, I can't really see it that well, but you get the gist of it. Oh, the basement is finished. Wow. So the listing agent failed to mention that uh, on the listing, but the basement is finished. Nice bar downstairs. You got a theater room here. It looks like some place for some exercise equipment and kind of a recreational area over here. Nice lighting. It is a drop ceiling. That's kind of a, um, a distraction, but again, you get what you pay for. Looks like they have another small, or I guess what would be considered a, a bedroom down here. And again, the picture of the bar, nice theater area, very nicely done. Oh, and you looks like there's another bath down there as well. So that's really nice. And then here's the backyard, right? You get a fence backyard, wrought iron fence, nice deck. Again, nice landscaping, little pergola here to create some shade. Just a really nice house. And so that, that will give you an idea of how far your 
your average sale price budget goes in Springboro, Ohio, $385,000 sale price. So moving right along, the next thing I want to talk about is the taxes. Um, and, you know, for me, it was uh, it was shocking uh, to find out how high Ohio taxes were. The sales tax rate in Ohio is 575 which is um, almost three quarters higher than the U.S. average. The property taxes, the average U.S. property tax rate is 1.1%. And so even in Springboro, where the taxes in Warren County are considered lower compared to that of uh, Montgomery County, which is where Dayton's at, and um, Greene County, which is where Beaver Creek's at, they are still relatively high. So as you can see here, uh, the, the average tax value in Springboro, $176,220 and, and at a sales tax rate of 1.77%. And then Clear Creek Township um, is $211,500. Clear Creek Township and Springboro are both Springboro schools. And stick around. I'm going to tell you what's really cool about Clear Creek Township here at the end of the video. And it will save you some money. So definitely want to stick around for that. So if you if you do a little math here, the average tax value in Springboro, one hundred seventy six thousand dollars. That's the tax appraised value. And if you take that times point zero one seven seven, you're looking at an annual tax of about three thousand one hundred eight dollars. And taxes are paid semi annual every six months in Ohio. So that's one thousand five hundred fifty four dollars um, every six months. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what your property taxes will look like here in um, Springboro. And uh, they're not cheap. Let's let's just be real. They are definitely not cheap. But again, it is a great community to live in and you get what you pay for. Right. So the next thing uh, that is a definite con here is there's just a lack of uh, racial diversity. And, um, you know, obviously you folks like to live in a more diverse community. Uh, and Springboro is definitely not that. And I took some statistics here from niche.com. And as you can see here, um, the racial diversity, 91% of the community is white, 3% uh, uh, is two or more races, 3% uh, is Hispanic, 2% um, is Asian, and 1% is African American. So no diversity at all. And that's, uh, that's obviously a little disappointing. Um, but again, it is, uh, I think, one of those things that is, uh, is, is a con about living in Springboro, Ohio. Next thing we'll talk about is um, Springboro's proximity to downtown and Wright-Pat. Downtown, obviously, a lot of employers, but Wright-Patterson is our largest employer. And I'm going to show you a little map here just to give you, again, some context. So in this outline here is Springboro. Here is 75, which is the major highway that runs through our area here. This runs down on into Cincinnati and actually goes down into Florida. Uh, I know 75 runs into Tampa Bay. But um, going from Springboro out to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, probably 30-minute drive um, if you're jumping on here and driving up. You can see you get on 675. A lot of times folks that are living down on in the southern um, uh, tip of Springboro are coming down 73 and jumping on 75 north here and then getting off at 675, which goes straight up to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, which you can see right here. And I've circled that. But it's a 30 minute drive. The good news is there's not a ton of traffic here, um, especially on 675. Now, you may run into some traffic on 75 going north to downtown Dayton. And that drive is about 25 minutes um, on a uh, on a day where there's not a lot of traffic. So, you know, again, one of the drawbacks of living in Springboro is it's a little far from um, some of our larger employers. Um, however, it is closer to Cincinnati uh, and there's a lot to do down in Cincinnati. Our Bengals play down in Cincinnati. There's, you know, a lot uh, um, there's a lot more diversity, a lot more. Um, choices as it relates to restaurants and entertainment. So um, it's a drawback for, from an employment standpoint if you work uh, obviously up in Dayton or at Wright-Patterson, but all in all, it is a very good location. So let's jump into the pros now that I've made you feel bad about wanting to live in Springboro. It is also, um, it also has its very uh, good points. And these are some of the reasons my wife and I chose to live here. 
And my wife is actually from Springboro, and that's why we live here. We met at Ohio State, moved back here. We've been in Springboro. We've actually built two homes here, and um, we absolutely love it. My two kids are uh, a senior this year, and um, I have another one in eighth grade, and, and they love the school system here. We love the school system here. Uh, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that as well. But um, I'm going to go over to Neighborhood Scout and talk to you about safety. Obviously, safety being um, a very important component when you're choosing a place to live. Uh, but the crime index, uh, according to Neighborhood Scout, is 83. And uh, it's safer than 83% of U.S. cities. And that is that says it all. That's outstanding. And uh, the number of crimes here in Springboro annually, there are 74 and, and uh, most of them are property related crimes. Only three of the crimes here in Springboro uh, were violent crimes. And uh, you can see those crime rate statistics per 1000 residents and they're pretty impressive. And so if you're looking for a safe place to live, according to Neighborhood Scout, uh, Springboro would be a very good choice for you. On to the next. Um, a lot of people love coming to Springboro because there's a lot of newer housing and uh, not that older housing is bad, but um, a lot of folks just like to have, um, you know, stuff that's newer, uh, myself included. And so one of the things you'll want to notate about living in Springboro is most of the housing here. And I love this graphic um, because it shows you when um, a lot of the housing was built. And you can see a bulk of the housing. It, it really started to pick up in the 80s, but in the 90s and on into the 2000s, it took off. And that's why um, from you know a standpoint of looking at newer homes, and I say you know 1990 and newer, to me, that's still fairly new, especially given um, the fact that many of Many of the houses built in our area were built in the you know 40s, 50s, and 60s. 1990s is is fairly new, and uh, they're still building here. So Springboro is a, a still a great place to come and build a home because there are still lots of lots of lots. Yeah, I did say lots of lots. And certainly, if you're interested in building a new home, um, we have relationships with many of the track and uh, custom builders here. So reach out to us if that's something you're interested in as well. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the schools, right? Schools are always important, especially if you have children and if you um, are interested in property values and when you buy a home, who isn't, right? And uh, so I love, love, love referring to niche.com. As you seen before, when I talked about diversity, I referred to niche. And when I talk about schools, I, re I refer to niche. And I'll, I created this document. I'll actually put this in the description of the video so you can download this and visit all these sites as well. So you don't have to write all this stuff down because I already did it for you. And um, the next thing I want to talk about is the Springboro Community School District. And here is the grade. It's an A minus. Uh, they get an A for academics, an A minus for teachers, a B minus for clubs and activities, a C minus for diversity. And we talked about that in you know, the areas where we were talking about the cons, an A for college prep and a B for administration. Some of the other notable statistics here is that, actually, if I go here and expand this, I think it will tell me what I want to know under the full report card. The Springboro Community School District has highly rated public schools. Um, I think the, the obviously, you know, the thing you want to keep in mind here is that there's a 24 to one student to teacher ratio. And while that's not the best, I think it's still pretty good. Um, and, you know, I have a front row seat to that because I talk to my own kids and we feel like they're getting a really good education here in the Springboro area. Uh, certainly doesn't rate as high as like an Oakwood, but it is still uh, a highly rated school according to niche.com. So schools get an a minus here in Springboro. So you can feel pretty confident if you're putting your kids in the Springboro school system that they will get a good education according to niche.com. And the last thing I want to talk to you about, and I, I told you to hang around because this could potentially save you thousands of dollars, hundreds if not thousands of dollars, 
uh, by making this discernment because in Springboro proper, there is a city income tax of 1.5%. And relatively speaking, that is lower than Centerville or Oakwood, as you can see here on this document. But here is a way to cheat the system, kind of. If you move to Clear Creek Township, there are no city income taxes in the township. And so that could potentially save you a lot of money because this, as you see in Springboro City, um, it's 1.5%. So if you make $100,000, you're writing a check for $1,500. And if you make $200,000, you're writing a check for $3,000. So imagine you move to Clear Creek Township, it's zero. And so if you see a house that you like in Clear Creek Township and you see a house that you like in Springboro and they're the same price, that, that thing that might push you over the edge is the fact that that home in Clear Creek Township has no city income tax. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you um, are now smarter and that you're able to uh, make an intelligent and an informed decision about where you want to live, whether it's Springboro or any of the other uh, cities or suburbs here in the Dayton area. And um, if you have any questions, certainly feel free to reach out. And again, thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, video must be worth a million. My name is Mike Wall. I am the team leader of the Love Ohio Living Team. We are the number one real estate resource here on YouTube for all things Springboro real estate. We get calls, emails, and texts from people just like you every single day looking to make the move to Springboro. We absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to make a move in the next nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or even schedule a Zoom call in the description below. We'd be happy to help you make the smooth move to Springboro. Thanks again for watching.